You are listening to the Taylor Road Baptist Church Pastors Podcast. We are so excited to have you join with us today. Please make sure that you go and subscribe to our channel so you can get a notification every time we post a new podcast. Hey, we're back with another episode of the Taylor Road Pastors Podcast, and we have the privilege today of being joined by Miss Hannah Moore, our, our children's minister, and uh, first time on the podcast. Great having you. Thank you. Good to be here. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, and Seth is back, too. We've missed Seth like the last three weeks. Yes. That's right. It's good to be back. I know. He's been busy with <laughs> birthdays and foster kids and, yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, we've missed you. And of course, Dan- Daniel's over here scrolling Instagram, but he's here. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> keeping the social media Man. updated. You young buck for the church. Yeah, you millennials in your social media. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'm not going. I don't have a. Just as long as you don't turn into like one of those. I don't like, have a comeback. One of those athletes that like ends up tweeting and making a fool of himself. <laughs> you know, which I, I, I would never know. It. I don't have Twitter, so I, have I wouldn't some. know. Twitter. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, I got no- nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving you out to dry. Hey, I, you can leave me out to dry. This, Hannah's a little bit nervous being her first. Yeah, podcast, we're, I am but, all nervous. But we've been we've been wanting to talk to her for quite a while about the the children's ministry, and so mm-hmm. we we found her just floating around the church and <laughs> just floating around. Around. <laughs> just floating around the church, and so. Uh, we're just going to ask you a little bit on the children's ministry and just kind of get it, get kind of a behind the scenes look, uh, a little bit of insight into to what's going on with the children's ministry for those of us that don't get to work down there very often. Yeah, well, Daniel asked me to share a little bit too about why we do kids worship. So every Sunday morning we have kids worship. They get to worship with their families for the first few songs, and then when Daniel comes up to preach, we dismiss for kids worship. And um, there's a different story each week, and we just go really deep into the context of the story. We highlight the verse of the week and practice memorizing that. But it's a really great time for the kids to get to break down the story and ask questions. Um, We have a little bit of time whole group, and then they spend a good amount of time in small groups with their teachers where they can ask questions um, and just go deeper into Scripture. And if we don't know the answers, we're um, proud to tell them that we don't know, but we'll look it up and get into Scripture with them on Wednesday night with it. And then we typically spend the rest of the time memorizing the verse for the week. So it's just a great opportunity to go deeper with the kids rather than just... um, Assuming that they understand, I think it's a good opportunity to make sure that they have a depth of understanding, which is a huge goal of the children's ministry that we have. And on Wednesday nights, we use that same story um, to go deeper with it, and they um, can ask more questions in a smaller environment, and then we work on the memory verse. So it's a great time that we have. But I love that we follow that one um, story each week so they are understanding it in its full entirety. So brings up a good point. Uh, the The... The fact that, you know, what I'm seeing in our church over the last three years is just kind of this gathering around a singular purpose, you know, and uh, we made we made some strategic decisions about a year or so ago that I think maybe not have been that popular with some folks, but really kind of were like, hey, look, this is helping us achieve the bigger goal here. And, and one of those was moving away from Awana into more of a, a focused, really cohesive children's ministry curriculum, you know, mm-hmm. whereas yeah. I think in a lot of churches, you kids are in there for Sunday school and they got one lesson and then they go to children's church or they maybe some churches they stay in worship and they're hearing something different. And then on Wednesday night, they've got something else. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I think church, the, the church oftentimes forgets, especially older folks that don't have kids anymore, there's a lot of homework and there's a lot of schoolwork and yeah. there's a lot of responsibilities out yeah. there. So what we decided to do, and I'm just very proud that, that Hannah led the way on this because, again, you know, it was it was a change in direction, but it was a change in, I think, our direction mm-hmm. of let's stick with one lesson for Sunday morning, Sunday school, for kids worship, and then Wednesday, Wednesday night. night and just... So just uh, talk about that for a second and kind of like what led to that. Yeah, so I also didn't mention that Sunday school, they're learning the same story. Um, And you would think, wow, that's a lot of time to talk about the same story. But it's incredible, even for me, when I sit down on Wednesday nights, we have another teacher that breaks it down and um, will share things that he's researched and found out. And the kids are just amazed um, as they learn something they didn't know. So they're watching it on a video in kids' worship. They're hearing their Sunday school teach about it, um, Sunday school teacher teach about it. And then they're hearing it again on Wednesday just from a different perspective. And I really don't think, 
think any kid has like heard the same thing multiple times and felt like it was boring to them. I think each time they learn something new, um, and I do too. And so I just think it's been a great change for us as a church, um, just like I said, to find that depth for the kids. I think it's really important that they don't just hear the story, but they understand why, and we encourage them to ask questions so that they can find it for themselves. I don't ever want them to take my word for it, but I want them to either ask where they can find it in Scripture or for me to be able to go back and show them where that is too. So I think it's setting you up for youth ministry to hopefully our kids are learning not just the story but the whole part of it too and where it came from and why. I've seen a lot of growth in my girls. And yeah. I, know Seth I, can can I was going to ask you guys about that. I yeah. have kids in there, but how, how, are you, how are your girls growing? Yeah, one thing I love about what they're, what Millie Claire's learning is she comes home and she shows me the notes she's mm-hmm. taken and that she's been mm-hmm. able to write out in her words what y'all are talking about and, mm-hmm. and not only just regurgitate the, the information but really talk about the, the context and the application to that mm-hmm. as well. So it's been, I've loved how Millie Claire gets, she's yeah. excited about it, Sweet. loves to talk about it, and I mean, is really taking something away from it. So. And that's, and again, you know, that's not a knock on Awana, because I grew up in Awana. But I think kind of our heart is, you know, we want to make disciples. And that's not that Awana doesn't do that, but we want to, we want to break it down into bite size, everybody's on the same page instead of, you know, like Clint's learning a verse, Hannah's learning a verse, Seth's learning, and we're not all on the same page, Mm -hmm. but this is, I mean, like Seth was talking about Millie Claire, I mean, even my girls are journaling at home and writing in these little notebooks, and Mm -hmm. like they know where books of the Bible are, and they'll ask me during the week, you know, especially Emma, you know, Miss Kristen Metcalf's her little teacher in there, and she's like, Miss Kristen said for us to find our favorite for a psalm that goes with a song that we like. And so he, she and I spent some time, you know, picking her favorite worship song and then researching what verse mm-hmm. out of the Bible that was that was found. So it was just really cool to be able to connect those and say, this is a song you sing from the radio or in church, and here's where it is in God's mm-hmm. Word, and it's not that we're making up right, straight, stuff. Straight from we're, Scripture. We're, yeah. yeah, and so That's cool. just that level of depth. And, and so, Hannah, you know, as our church, you know, three and three years ago or so, we, we kind of unveiled the, or really began building on that we exist for the glory of God to introduce people to Jesus, teach them, teach them to follow him. And then Clint began to shape that student ministry around that same purpose, just, you know, a little bit more fine-tuned to students. Um, and then you came on board later. You've got the scent, mm-hmm. you know, and you introduced that a while back. And, and I know... Our church, especially our campus, when I talk about that, our campus is a large campus, and some folks may not make it to, you know, ever go down that children's hall mm-hmm. or whatever, and they've never seen the Scent logo or understood that. What? Why that logo? I mean, why that motto? If yeah, you will? that was right before I think we had a business meeting and I got to share, but the Lord just put that on my heart just for multiple reasons. Um, I know Clint's heart is so passionate about equipping these kids before they graduate um, just to have a solid foundation. And the more I thought about that and prayed through it, um, the Lord just gave me those that um, that little phrase sent, and each letter stands for something different. But um, I think our job as the children at the lowest level with them is that we would build a strong foundation um, just in their knowledge of where um, books are in the Bible and how to find it and what it means. Um, and then the E is that they would be equipped, that they would be able to ask those questions, and we would be right there beside them to help guide and direct them. And then the N is that they would just reach a new depth of understanding. And then the T is the hope that they would testify. And whether that's Mm -hmm. with us in the children's ministry or with Clint or another time in their life, that's just our prayer is that they would be able to testify to who Christ is Mm -hmm. based on what they've experienced and um, how Christ has changed their life. So That's that's awesome. Yeah, and I I absolutely love that you've you've come on board with that same vision because I you know, I've, I've seen some churches where the children's ministry and the student ministry really disconnected, mm-hmm. and uh, I really feel like we're one continuous ministry. Yeah, you know, where, you know, you are really doing a great job of laying the foundation. You and your volunteers and your leaders down there are really laying that foundation, uh, like you said, of, of sense and, and really uh, teaching them uh, what the basics of the gospel are and uh, what it means to be a missionary, that they can be missionaries. And then mm-hmm. we're just able to take it and do those exact same things just in a slightly different context yeah. to reach their their new age group um, in the student ministry and yeah. you know so I, I'm excited that you're on board with that same mm-hmm. vision and yeah. it's just so cool to see just something continuous it is I mean you know to go from the kids ministry with sent and then the student ministry where they're going right where they're going yeah. and then yeah. and then you walk into 
the front doors of our lobby and you look to the left, you know, and there's our missions area, mm-hmm. our right, our disciple making area, and right there. I mean, so that's again, there is a method to this madness. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and I, sometimes I just I feel like, you know, okay, God, you've given us the direction. Let us, you know, my I guess my my challenge, my personality, is just putting my hands to the plow and just staying in that same direction, you know, instead of chasing squirrels. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, that's easy to do. Like, mm-hmm. you can, and I think Baptists especially have been guilty of that. We'll unroll a new theme or un, uh, unveil a new model every time the sun rises. But this is the Great Commission, and it's for children, and it's for teenagers and college students. We talked to Mason, you know, last week, and it's for it's for all followers of Christ on every level, and that's just the beautiful. We're talking about children, we talked about teenagers, and again, you know, our young professionals in colleges, and now adults. You know, so it's just. Hopefully, there's no mistaking what we're all about here. Mm-hmm. No, I don't, I don't think there is, and uh, I think that's become part of our DNA. I mean, since you got here three years ago, and I know God really gave you that vision of introduce people to Jesus, teach them to follow him. And it wasn't anything like earth shattering or groundbreaking. You yeah. just, it's its the great commission. Like mm-hmm. you said, we go and make disciples and teach them to follow him. Yeah. And, and, you know, probably 10 years ago, I guess, David Platt wrote the book Radical and it became like this huge best-selling book. And I can remember, uh, I was reading it uh, on, on a mission trip to Romania. Um, and my dad, I can remember my dad asking me, he was like, why, why do you think that book's so popular? And I was like, well, I mean, it's just, it's radical. Yeah. And he said, he said, and he, I can remember he asked me, he said, is it really radical? He said, because this is the way, and it's, it's really the model, it's the phrase that I keep going back to for our church. Jesus started the church the way he wanted it, and now he wants it the way he started it. Mm. And the only reason that's called radical is because we've gotten so, so far, far away, away from mm. what he wanted his church to be. So, so like, Two years ago, or however long it was, when we started home groups, people were like, I was asked, is this something that the Montgomery Baptists are experimenting with? (laughs) And I was like, no, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but this is something that worked 2,000 years ago in Acts chapter 2, you know, and I know we've kind of gotten the reputation with some in the community that we're that missions church. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If we're going to be accused of something... Give us that, like, any day. Mm-hmm. And so, while it may look radical, it's really, we're just trying to be as true to the New Testament as possible. And so for kids to know the Bible, mm-hmm. not just, you know, know verses for a week so they get a check mark, right? but to know God's Word. Right. That's unreal. And more importantly, know how it applies to them. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, I think there's a lot of people that know about the Bible, but know how it applies. And yeah. it, you, know, you guys are you guys are doing that down there. You're showing them how this is applicable in their life. Um, so what what's what's on the horizon for the children's ministry? What do you have coming up? Some events, maybe some some big plans you have yes. coming down the pike. So um, April seventeenth is Wednesday night, and we will be um, kind of breaking down our service for Good Friday. So my thought behind that, at first, I was just um, the Good Friday service last last year. I just kept looking around and seeing a lot of kids in there, and that was so cool to see them in there. But I just I saw their little faces; they just seemed confused, or maybe they were coloring, and just the parents were trying to keep them distracted or quiet. There was um, a lot of goldfish consumed. Yeah, there were night. a lot of goldfish, a lot of coloring, <laughs> yeah, and I just so. noticed. And at first, I was thinking, well, man, maybe we just need to do a Good Friday service for the kids to help them understand. I think it would be good for adults that could serve just to go back to what it's all about. But then the more I thought about it, I was thinking that I would rather take that Wednesday before just to prepare them for what they will see so they're with their families and they can still ask questions so they will still be in there. But that Wednesday night, the 17th, we're going to really break down. Um, I'm working with Seth on the songs they're going to do just to kind of help them understand the context of where those come from. And we're going to have stations, very similar to Stations at the Cross, for the kids to walk through um, the story of Easter leading up to the death of Jesus. And so it will end a little heavy in the sense of that they'll end at the grave, but um, the hope is that they come 
come back for Easter Sunday mm. to see that that's not the end of the story. That the end of the story is that he is um, risen and that he is our Savior. And so I just really wanted them to understand from the, the youngest, the kindergartner to the fifth grader, even to someone that helps, that it would really minister to them to see um, that it's not just a story, but it's um, just a story of redemption and grace in our lives every day of how good he is. So That's awesome. Yeah. Well, as, as the pastor, I guess, trying to help people get plugged in different areas, if somebody's listening and they, you know, one of the biggest things that we always need is people to serve, but we want to be kind of walking people through that, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to just, we don't, we don't just throw people in cold no, turkey, no. you know, and say, you know, here's all this responsibility. Right. So like for us, what how if somebody wants to say hey i want to step up and help out like you know obviously we we do background checks and mm -hmm. we, we're trying to be way more proactive in that so that's really one of the first steps if yes. you're not involved in children's ministry then we will do a background check again we talked clint and i talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the podcast that we are we are called to be the shepherds and mm -hmm. shepherds protect and right. so um but after after that you know initial background check and kind of sitting down and saying hey you know, let's get to know each other. Like, where are some areas that people can serve in yeah, our children's ministry? Absolutely. So, on Sunday mornings for kids' worship, um, a huge need is that breakout time. So, we break up into kindergarten first. So, that requires two teachers, um, then second and third, and fourth and fifth. And so, those are huge needs that we have weekly, um, at least two in each class. And then, in addition to that, on Wednesday nights, we have it set up to the same age group. But um, just having teachers that are willing to come consistently to meet with those kids to form relationships and um, be willing to answer those questions and get to scripture with them so mm. and that's you know it's not anything to be intimidated by no, you know because I, so I love fun. what you you said earlier if a kid asks a question you're like uh it's okay it's to okay say it's know. okay yeah. hey we'll come back next week yeah. and i will try to have something you know we'll go ask miss hannah or yeah. pastor <laughs> daniel or clint you know which is great i mean um but one of the things too that i want to mention uh may the 5th yes is a big day, and if you're listening to this podcast, which I hope you are, if you're not, then you won't hear this. But uh, <laughs> it's very observant. Yeah, I know. Um, but um, May the fifth, it's a we, Sunday. It's a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. We have a time yet. We'll get you the time. Uh, but we're gonna do a couple of things that that afternoon. Again, it's a Sunday afternoon, uh, but it's so important. We believe in really equipping. We're gonna. We're just going to take some time. If you are involved in preschool, nursery, kids worship, sun, kids Sunday school, anything that has to do with children, even Bible school, ki kids camp, whatever, if you are an adult or a, a college student or a teenager that is involved, we need you here. We'll get you the details as far as time. Uh, but we're going to go over just a fresh and a new, some some protocol just for everybody's safety not just the kids mm -hmm. but and one thing clint and i talked about a couple of weeks ago on this podcast was we we need to focus on protecting the children but we also want to focus on protecting our volunteers mm -hmm. from any accusation we, we yeah. want to help put you in the right spots Absolutely. to win and succeed uh and so we're going to go over some some just again refresher course of here's what we want to do here's what mm -hmm. we don't want to do we want to avoid and then that will also be a day where Hannah, you you just kind of introduced the Bible school curriculum, and, yes. and we just... So that's going to be a big day that if you are involved with children in any form or fashion, um, you need to put that on your calendar, May yes. the 5th. Um, do you want to say anything about that, or... or no, I think you said it well. Okay. It um, goes back to that E with equipping. So there will be a little bit, a lot of training that day, but also, like like Daniel said, not just for the sake of the kids, but for our volunteers, too, just to kind of yeah. all get on the same page. It's so important, you know, for us to... To just be on guard because one of the things is that God is really entrusting us with new families and new faces. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be faithful to the ones that have been here and have been members and to the new ones. Right. You know, and, and nothing will deter a new family like uh, looking like we're irresponsible. Right. You know, and, and no longer, you know, one of the lessons that we had learned at our little, little church in South Carolina is just a beautiful little family up there. But one of the things we had to learn was. If we want to see growth, we have to move past being a family church to a community church. In other words, not everybody knows everybody. Right. However long, that new family coming in there. I mean, I met, I left the worship center Sunday right after preaching. I had to go straight into another room to pray with some folks. But 
ran in the hallway in, into a husband and a wife who had a baby girl. Mm-hmm. And and the thing I said to him, she, the wife had gone to get the little girl from the preschool hall. I said, thank you for trusting us with her today. Thank you. And we don't regard that lightly. Mm-hmm. Like we, that's big. Yeah. For you to drop your, uh, you know, you're in a new place, new faces. You well, don't know anybody. And you're going to leave your kid with us for an hour or so. That's, we don't want to, you know, we don't want some teenager or, you know, or young kid handing you your baby going, thanks. You yeah. know, like that's <laughs> not really responsible. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of throw that out there that we'll be doing some really cool training. I say cool. I don't know how cool training is, but it's essential. It's it's it crucial. is essential. There will be coffee to what we're doing. and sugary stuff <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. On a Sunday afternoon, you're gonna need it. I'm not preaching, so that'll be an incentive for people to come. Oh yeah, to the to the training. Yeah, yeah. The, you can sleep through. I guess I'm yeah, sleep that through. Day, so <laughs> you can sleep. You sleep late. No. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. You're not <laughs> joking. Um. I guess some other things we got coming up. I guess this coming Friday and Saturday is the men's retreats. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that. I think we got almost 40 signed up. Yeah, here. close 40 to 40. Men. We're like 36, 37 That's right now. Awesome. It is. Yeah. We, yeah, I'm excited about it. We're going to have some testimonies from guys that are just being real. And we're going to have mm-hmm. some breakout sessions. And uh, Luke, Stevens, and Seth, and myself, we're going to take some just lead worship, you know, and acoustics. Stuff and I'm so I'm glad that Luke is leading. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Luke leading. I mean, I can you can't sleep, be I'll sleep through your stuff. I can't be beautiful and good musically. It's very, so. true. <laughs> very true. <clears throat> you can be mediocre at both, though. I could, yeah, well, you're mediocre at both. <laughs> All right, let's move along. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you talked about Hosea yesterday, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the tender love of God, yeah, uh, anything. Anything interesting you want to point out about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the points I made about that was, and this is so crucial, that that God does not, when it comes to our relationship with Him as His children, He is, we we tend to, as Christians, slip into this legalist, Pharisee relationship where God's mainly concerned with my behavior. Mm. He's not concerned with my behavior, He's concerned with my heart. Mm. So, so yesterday in in the sermon uh of, two of yeah two days ago uh, no yesterday uh we talked about hosea and the tender love of god we we talked about just how you know god is wooing or he was telling hosea to woo gomer you know and and try to allure her and he said i'm going to do the same thing with my people i'm going to woo them and i'm going to lure them back into the wilderness and just that imagery of God on a personal, almost like he's a husband or a male pursuing a female. And God says, this is how I feel about you. I don't, I'm not in this just to have religiously behaving people. I'm after your heart. And, you know, I use the illustration. My wife does not want me to just do things so that she won't be mad at me or whatever. She wants me to win her heart. And the moment I stop doing that is the moment our relationships become superficial. Right. And the moment that my faith and my walk with Christ becomes anything other than a heart, like I'm allowing God to win my heart. If he wins my behavior, it's superficial. Right. Yeah. If he wins my heart, that's what he wants. Hmm. And so, yeah. Thanks for well, good. That was, that was that was good. Don't ask me about next week. And, and not, the, I love that. I love that you followed up the tough love with the tender love. Well, that's how God did. You know, He's like, yeah. I want you to, I want you to feel the weight of your sin, but I want you to feel the freedom of grace. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, man. Yeah. Good hey, stuff. one other thing. Can I say one other thing before um, we go? I don't know, man. I'm the pastor. I'll do what I want. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Hey, so uh, you know, at our at our family worship night last Sunday night, uh, the business meeting time, it talked about uh, the the fourth quarter, or the four quarter blitzes, you know, and how God has placed us strategically in this community. Uh, one of the re- big reasons I came to Taylor Road was because I'd never seen a church with a greater location. 
I mean, where we are is oh, yeah. unreal. And yes. so um, one of the things that I want us now, again, having been here for three years, to begin, you know, we've, we've kind of built this DNA of disciple making and missions and all that. How can we now be strategic right here on Taylor Road? And so um, the idea is with, uh, with four fifth Sundays, or four, four months with five Sundays, I guess. There's four quarters. Uh, is that really confusing? I'm glad, you, I'm glad you did that math. So four so, Sundays. Yeah. No, four months. Four months. With five Sundays. With five Sundays. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the idea that. is every fifth Sunday, so four times a year, we will meet up here at the church at 3 o'clock and go to a different part of a one-mile radius around our church. Um, so the State Board of Missions right now, I've already emailed them. Uh, they're going to, um, you know, map out our area, give us some demographics, stuff like that. And so we're just going to systematically, so with the hopes that by, you know, 2024, within five years, we will have made contact with every house within a one-mile radius of our church. Mm. Whether that's, you know, and we want to do spiritual surveys or at least leave an invitation. Um, but God has called us to bloom where we're planted. And so they're not going to come and see if we don't go and tell. That's true. And mm. so that's... And it's like what we talked about last week on the podcast with Mason, just the whole concept of, oh my goodness, I don't have to go on an airplane, on a mission trip to do this. I can go out you know the front door and, mm -hmm. and do that so yeah. that's the idea every fifth Sunday for the next few years until we reach every house in this area you know one mile radius that'll be really cool to tie the kids into because we talk about every Sunday before they leave like you are sent that's today right. in mm -hmm. your school in your at your house like you're sent in your neighborhood and so that'll be cool to let our kids yeah go mm -hmm. not far from the church but get to tell people that's right. in their community about Jesus I'm excited so. about it it's just a it's kind of a new initiative of Look, we want to, again, we want to be a church that reaches people for Jesus. And yeah. again, we are reaching people, not expecting yeah. them to come into our, mm -hmm. to our find doors. us. It is. And I know that'll be really uncomfortable for a lot of people yeah, to, sure. to go and knock on the door. And as you heard from our San Diego team last night, that was one of their favorite things to do was prayer walking. And they were really uncomfortable before they started. But by the end of the day, they were excited to go knock on another door. And so I think... You know, by, by doing it five times a year, it sounds like you've done the math, if that was done correctly. Uh, then, you know, five times a year, you're going to get an opportunity to get math uncomfortable. Yeah. And, yeah. Here you in know. your own community. Four yeah. times a year. Is it four? Yeah. Did you said Four months. I'm so confused. Four, four months, months with five with Sundays. Five, okay, yeah. see, Oklahoma math, <laughs> Oklahoma coming out in me again. <laughs> doing all my land running. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. Cool. Well, yeah, that gives us opportunity to get uncomfortable. And I guess if you know, if we can become somewhat comfortable with going to a stranger's door and knocking on it, we should be even more comfortable talking to somebody we know. Mm -hmm. And and really, you know, not to get into future plans in terms of like how what requirements for mission trips, but you know, you talk to anybody that interviews with the International Mission Board or the North American Mission Board when they go to interview to be a missionary one of the first things they get asked is, how many people have you shared the gospel with this year? Mm. And if you're like, uh... <laughs> then, oh, then their response is, why would we pay you to go overseas to do this if you're not even doing it here at home? Yeah. And so my vision is that we're not just sending people on mission trips that have never shared their faith before, but that we are providing regular opportunities here at home you know, and we do. I mean, we've got Good News Club. We've got all these different ministries and missions here in our city. But we, again, I don't think you can do too much of sharing Jesus. And so right. we want, and again, it may not be that we're not going to, we are, I'm not unrealistic here. We're not going to talk to every single person that lives in these houses. Some of them aren't going to come to the door. You know, they won't be home. I wouldn't answer the door. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those guys that like looks out the window <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they'll leave something for me. Yeah. He's so I just, I just don't, I don't want to. Right. I'm sorry. Well, and that's, that's going to be the case. But, but what we're if? just called to plant a seed. Yeah, yeah that's right. They're going to get a door hanger, you yeah. know, and that door hanger is going to have information about the church. May, you know, maybe that we create one that just has a brief plan of salvation on mm -hmm. it. Who knows? We, we want people to know that, again, Jesus said, go and reach them. 
don't open your doors and expect them to come in. Mm. I've never gone fishing and the fish jumped in the boat. That'd be cool, though. You know? I mean, but that's... Jesus said you're going to be fishers of men. Yeah. I've never just taken my boat out into the lake and said, all right, go on. I had to actually do something. I had to be, be proactive. Be intentional. Yeah. yeah. So go where the fish are. Yeah. So I think Crocodile Dundee did that in one of his... Like the beginning of Crocodile Dundee. You would. He was dropping like dynamite and fish were just floating to the surface. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that we can like drop dynamite around Halcyon and say that probably wouldn't go well. That's Maybe. two controversial statements you've made at the end of podcast back to back well you know if they're making it this far i'm, I'm really happy if people make it this far and so uh, we'll find out, we'll find yeah, out who's listening to the end listened, yeah. uh, well hannah thank you so much for for joining us today yes, even thanks though for having me. it might have been impromptu you did a great job <laughs> thank you so much for letting us in on kind of what's going on in your head by behind children's ministry yeah. um all right well you guys have a, a great week and uh we'll see you wednesday and uh look forward to seeing sunday as well Again, thank you so much for joining with us today. Please make sure that you go and subscribe to our channel so you can get those notifications. If you'd like to know more about Taylor Road Baptist Church, we're at taylorroad.org. We're located at 1685 Taylor Road, Montgomery, Alabama, 36117.